Welcome again to the Butterfly Effect. Today is stage four of Torino Adriatico. Already stage one, two, and three have been won by the legends of the sport. They're new. They're coming up. We've seen them shine in about two years ago. They shined bright last year, and now they're shining bright this year already at Torino Adriatico. Matthew van der Poel, stage winner. Walt Van Aert, stage winner, and none other than world champion Julian Alaphilippe, also stage winner. Today we'll continue the record going because it's going to be a summit finish and it's going to be exciting. Folks, let's just talk about the last 15K because this is a summit day. We're going up the climb of Prati di Tivo here in Italy. When I did it, there was snow on the side of the roads. It was definitely cold at the start. This climb really only has about one section that eases up quite a bit but after that the whole climb 15k of that climb it's difficult climb steady the whole time doesn't change pitches too much the beginning is hard a little bit when they go through the town it'll drop off a little bit there be two three percent or something and then as soon as you make the left turn it goes hard from there all the way to the line this is a difficult climb race leader Walt Van Art. he's not a pure climber well we all know he can climb we just don't call him a climber because he wins field sprints too his job today is damage control his presence today I want to point out on this last climb changes what all the other GC climber favorites will do on a stage like today. Normally the attacks don't come until 3K to go. When I did it, both years I did it, it was steady, everybody blows up, and then we attacked each other 3K from the line. Next year when I did it, it was the Enos train on there, then they were called Sky, and it was Chris Froome setting the, having his team set the tempo all the way up there, blitzering pace, just blew everybody's legs up. Chris launched, won the stage, this year it's different and Wal Van Aert is the key to that. He's changing all of the magical figures that normally work for a GC guy to win a stage like this and then take the overall. Guys that are racing for the overall know they need time on Wal Van Aert. You cannot get time on Wal Van Aert if you go 1k, 2k, 3k from the finish. So when we start to climb it's none other than Tade Pogacar, last year's Tour de France winner, UAE Team Emirates, driving it into the turn. You have a right turn there, and the climb starts hard and fast right after that. UAE Emirates is drilling it hard. As soon as their guys blow up, which is really fast, they don't last too long, let's call it 500 meters, then it's Team Ineos hopping on the front, and they got six guys left. Now we only start with seven here and they got six on this last climb. So they got a very strong team, not the absolute favorites. I know you're like, Egon Bernal's not the favorite. G. Thomas, Tour de France winner is not the favorite. Those guys are not the favorite. We all know it's Walt Van Aert, Tadej Pogacar, the two big names at this particular race. We also have defending champion, Simon Yates here, but he's already lost time in the earlier stages of Trino Adriatico. So after Ineos take the front, they're riding with six. Like I said, at 3K, from, or sorry, 11K from the line, it's Ciccone from the Trek Sega Fredo team throwing in attack. This tack, guys, he's Italian. It's Italian race. You know it's going to be televised with all these big names in there. He's not going to finish with the front group. I don't even believe he's attacking to soften up the pace or anything. I think it's just TV time. It's the only thing that makes sense. When you're attacking from behind the Ineos train and you're going by them and there's six of them lined up on the road and you're going by one, two, three, four, five, six Ineos guys, there's no reason to be attacking. They already have the pace as fast and hard as any domestique rider can possibly make it. So Ciccone's move, he couldn't possibly have been thinking about anything other than some TV time because we're in Italy. So his move stays about 2K. When he goes, they lose the first guy on the front from Ineos. Now they're left with five, and it's Filippo Ghana. I mean, this guy's Italian too. He's a big guy, time trial specialist, world time trial champion. I believe his record is he's won every time trial for the last year, year and a half that he's entered. And now he's a climber too. We got a whole new breed of, of riders now. It's not just sprinter, climber, and time trialists. Now time trial guys can climb. Sprinters can climb and vice versa. It's ugly. Then you throw an Alaphilippe and the, the soup is all mixed up. 
Philippe Bourgogne does amazing right, guys. He pulls about 3K on the front. He is in that group for about 7K. From the time that climb started to the time he pulled off at the front, he's in that group for 7K, but he's pulling for three of those. And so that was a big, big effort on his part. After he's caught, 8K to go about is when Egon Bernal just lights it up. His last Enos rider besides G. Thomas that's on his wheel. So those are the two favorites. The last domestique, Enos rider pulls off. Egon Bernal lights it up, and this causes a chain reaction where a lot of the favorites want to go with. His move won't stick. Walt Van Art, this is now when Walt has to start going to work, basically from 8K all the way to the, to the summit finish. Walt, you'll see at almost any point when you look at him, he's in the wind chasing. Now, he's doing it perfect, okay? There's nothing else you can do. You're the big, big favorite here. Everybody knows they can't pull you to the line. He still has time bonuses in the later stages he can still. He still has a time trial on the last stage where he can gain some time on guys. So all these little climbers do not want to pull him to the line. Back there with every attack all the way from that 8 kilometers to the top is when really Walt Van Aert's going to work and he knows that's what's going to be the recipe on today's stage. Once the attacks start, steady rhythm, hard, fast pace, but always steady. Don't go into the red, just stay below the red, and he does that perfectly. I saw all the announcers have talked about it from time to time, about maybe he's on the front too much. There was no choice. He was always going to be on the front. You cannot slow down. He rode it perfect. Now, Egon Bernal, he gets caught. And with 6K to go, it's none other than Tour de France winner last year, Tadej Pogacar, that lights it up. You have G. Thomas already up the road with a little bit of gap. He catches Garrett Thomas. Garrett Thomas sits on his wheel for about a K, and then Garrett Thomas blows right as they are catching. The last breakaway rider there up the road, Mad Schmidt from the Israel Startup Nation team. He did a great job trying to stay off all the way to the line, but it wasn't going to be with this many favorites in the group attacking and trying to drop Walt Van Aert to the line. Now, after Tadej Pogacar gets rid of G. Thomas, he's in time trial mode, guys. He's just got to ride steady all the way to the line and try to put as much time as he can on Walt Van Aert. Now remember, Tadej Pogacar can time trial. So when you look at that final stage, maybe he loses a few seconds there, 10 seconds, 15. Maybe he gets 10 or 15 on Walt Van Aert. I'm not sure. That boy can definitely time trial. I put my money on Walt to gain 10 seconds on Tadej on such a short course of the last day. But with all these time bonuses still available, plus a 10-second bonus I'm going to give him on the time trial for Wout. Tadej Pogacar needs time, and he's driving it. Now behind, Egon Bernal, he's going to put in another dig. And this is the last bid right here to try to gain time on Wout Van Aert and bring back Tadej Pogacar. It's not going to happen, though, because he gets a gap up there. He has Mikhail Landa with him, and he has Simon Yates. Now this whole climb up till this 4K to go, Simon Yates has been hidden in the back. He's been hiding, tucked away, not doing any work, following wheels. Every one of the other favorites pretty much has either been attacking, jumping across moves, following moves, or getting dropped off the back. And there's Simon Yates back there just hidden the whole time. So he follows the Egon Bernal move with Mikhail Landa. And even when he's in that group with three of them, I never once saw him pulling on the TV screen. Maybe we missed it with the cameras or something, but he, to me it looked like he was hidden the whole time on both those two wheels. And then with 3K to go, Simon Yates just does an amazing attack, drops both of his breakaway companions. And remember, Egon Bernal, Tour de France champion. Okay? Garrett Thomas, who was up there earlier that we were watching, Tour de France champion. Tadej Pogacar is up the road, current Tour de France champion. <laughs> Simon Yates, Tour of Spain champion. I mean, this is a deep quality filled Walt Van Aert chasing classic one day specialist. I mean, Jesus, Tour de France stage winner, everything. Now the race is on. You see, you see them drag racing each other. The gap's about 12, 13 seconds from Tade Pogacar and Simon Yates as they take it all the way to the line. At one point to go, with about 1K to go, you see Tadej Pogacar do one more dig to try to keep that gap. 
away from Simon Yates so he doesn't lose the stage. Tadej Pogacar needs this stage because he needs the time bonuses on Walt. Needs as much time as he can get with a couple more stages still coming up. It's going to be difficult. Walt Van Aert from behind, amazing. Walt dropped Julian Alaphilippe. He dropped Vincenzo Nibali. He dropped Egon Bernal. He dropped Garrett Thomas. I mean, he's, he's a climber. I don't know what you call him. There's got to be another word for what Walt Van Aert is as a specialist here in pro bike racing. He does an amazing job, finishes ninth on the stage, 45 seconds, I believe he lost. He's sitting second on the general classification, tied with Sergio Aguita, the Colombian, riding for EF Education, who's also third, 35 seconds back. Can it be done? Can Walt Van Aert still win Trino Adriatico? Sitting second, 35 seconds behind the legendary rider, Tadej Pogacar. It's going to be exciting, guys. I, I couldn't call it. I mean, between the 10-second bonus that I'll give him in the TT, he's got to gain some time in, the st in each of the time bonuses throughout the stage. But here's the thing. Tomorrow is a very difficult stage. Tadej Pogacar does not have that kind of team. We saw Formolo, his teammate, he dropped off early on, this, on the stage today, and that was his only climber that he had with him starting this climb, so it's going to be difficult. Now, today's stage, UAE Team Emirates also did a lot of work coming into that climb. They rode on the front all day today, so that will have some kind of effect on their legs for tomorrow's stage too. So remember, something to keep an eye out when you're watching tomorrow's stage. Can Tadej Pogacar's UAE Team Emirates team can they guide him all the way to the finish line and give him a chance to win the overall here at Torino Adriatico? It's a big question mark on his team strength. I don't have the answers for you. I'm sorry. But that's what you got to look out for tomorrow. Can they hold it together? Can Walt Van Aert put some kind of distance into, the, into Tadej Pogacar at each of these finishes and grab some bonuses or maybe put his team behind the eight ball and just attack him somewhere on tomorrow's stage? Going to be exciting tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. Another legend wins today's stage. We've had four stage wins. All of them are just fantastic riders. It's a great Trino Adriatico. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys real soon.